and welcome to the Other Pay Gamers Podcast. My name is Tony. I am with my friend and colleague, Justin. Hello! There he is. Today, we have some things to talk about. First and foremost, well actually last, our Iron <laughs> Fist impressions on the first couple of episodes. That's we haven't right. finished it all yet. True. We're going to talk about Mass Infect Andromeda and everything that's happening pre-launch. Mass Infect? Okay. <laughs> there is some Marvel movie news. Dun dun dun! Some other movie news. Actually, a lot of Marvel movie news. We're going to talk about the Nintendo Switch again in their first sales for the couple weeks. And then Justin has a surprise for me and you, the listener. Yep, that's true. So let's jump in. Underpaid Gamers is the official podcast of underpaidgamers.com. You can find us on Twitter at UPGamersPodcast. Email us at underpaidgamerspodcast at gmail.com. Find us on Facebook, mm-hmm. Instagram, uh-huh. Twitch, uh-huh. at Underpaid Gamers. Yep. Yeah. I'm missing something. Who knows? SoundCloud. iTunes. Stitcher. While you're listening right now. Stitcher. Everywhere else. Google us. You'll there find you us. That's, that works. Yeah. So, uh, where do you want to start? Do you want the surprise first? I want your surprise first. Okay, so I know that you like to give me a lot... A lot of flack. I don't know if flack's the right word. That might be too too strong of a word. But when we talk about our... You call me a flat cannon? I am. Like 75 millimeter flat cannon. hey Coming right at me. Big daddy. Uh, if we talked about our favorite franchises of all time, or at least probably on your top three list, probably one on my top list, probably my top list, what would you say it is? What, are you, what, are you what is what is my favorite video game franchise? Video game franchise? Yes. Uh, video game franchise? Yes. Last of Us isn't a franchise yet. Right. Um, you like Eve? Not a franchise. Not a franchise. I don't know. You like Star Wars games, but there's not really a solid Star Wars game. Sure. Right. Not right. since like the first. You like Bethesda games. I do like Bethesda games. So probably Fallout. Uh, hmm. You didn't guess what I wanted. RPGs. What's my favorite RPGs? I don't know. Final Fantasy games! Oh, yeah. Come on! <laughs> I, I knew that. And every time we talk about Final Fantasy games... I definitely knew that. You usually say, oh man, I'm not really into it, but I do like this. Final Fantasy twelve. No, 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 no. Well, that's the thing you like the series that you like. Oh, Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest. Okay. So I downloaded the where, very first. Where are we going? I'm trying to make this more fun. Uh, I downloaded the very first Dragon Quest. Dragon Warrior. Yeah, I mean, on the phone it said Dragon Quest One. Uh, I'll show it to you. Okay. See DQ One. Uh, and oh, the sound now that things can go. No. Yuji Hori. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I played through that and beat it. Already? Yeah, it was three dollars. I was like, I was really feeling like a classic RPG, and I was like on Steam trying to find something. Yeah. That's like the really old Final Fantasy game. How many like, hours did that take you? Uh, it took me like probably ten hours. That's so short. It's a very short game. Uh, it, it also helps that uh, it's like formatted for a phone really well, and I think in the original it didn't give you the whole map from the beginning. I'm not sure. And it definitely gave me the whole map from the beginning. So what'd you think? Uh, it was pretty. It was good. It was. It was like. A classic RPG experience that I was really looking for. Okay. Whereas it didn't pull any punches. It's I died a lot. Yeah. You and do. when you die, you lose like half your money. Yes. So you lose exactly half your money. It's it so frustrating, sucks, <laughs> right? And there are all these like random things that happen that they don't tell. Like you have to talk to every single person in town and remember what they say to remember what to do in certain situations. That's true. So like one of the last city I found, they get better at that in the later games. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Um... One of the last towns I went to is guarded by a golem that you can't... There's, like, no way you could take him out yeah. without, without this item you find on the ground in, like, the second town. Oh, okay. You just found it, find it on the ground, and then you got to know to use it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, I, like, talked to some dude in another town, and he said to use it, so I used it. Gotcha. And it made sense. It, like, put him to sleep every time I, I used it. Oh, there you go. So I just kept hitting him while he was asleep, and then he'd wake up, and I'd use it again. So, uh, yeah, just stuff like that, and... Um, this one sage, like, you're supposed to talk to all these sages that would give you the things to build a bridge to the evil lord's castle. Okay. They didn't really tell you anything other than, you need to prove you're the son of Erdic, and then it, like, shot you out of the sage's tower with magic. 
<laughs> so it's like, okay, how do I do that? I've no, I literally have no idea, and I loved it because that's classic RPGs. Yeah, you're like, okay, now where do I go? You just gotta you gotta look around the world. You just gotta explore. You gotta talk to people, put things together. Uh, so it was a really fun experience. I felt like such a nerd too because we had field trips this week. And I was down at a college mm-hmm. uh, for this Model UN competition. And I was in the room. While everybody was, like, watching March Madness oh, on yeah. the projector. All the teachers were. And then I was, like, sitting in the corner on my phone. And people behind me could see me playing this <laughs> Dragon <laughs> Quest game. I felt like the biggest nerd in the room. Nah. Which I definitely was. Except for, I did, actually, I don't know if I was. Because somebody else walked in with, like, a Star Wars bag. Like a backpack. And it was you like became Star instantly Wars. jealous. I was like, dude, first off, that guy's a Star Wars nerd. So prop to him. But... He's a teacher and should look professional, and he uh, definitely does not look professional. I gotcha. <laughs> it made me kind of laugh. If you're looking for another one, you should download Dragon Quest V. Mm-hmm. It's much longer. Yeah. It's much more in-depth. Um, it kind of takes the standard role of RPGs where everybody has a destiny and you're always playing. Mm. Like, there's always these destinies. It kind of turns that upside down. Yeah. So, mm. that's what I have on my phone. I actually just uploaded. I'm going to get a new phone soon. Yeah. So, I'm not going to have this phone anymore. Um, so I uploaded my save to the cloud so I could re-download it on my another phone. Yeah, it's nice. So that's with, always a nice feature. With the Google Play stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was pretty impressed with it, and the controls are really good. Mm-hmm. They're, they're very well thought out. And I know Square Enix, I think they've really started to figure out that stuff um, with a lot of their other games. I was going to buy a Final Fantasy game at first, but the one I wanted, the ones I wanted were so expensive. I was like... I only use the money I get from doing the Google Opinion Rewards, uh-huh. so um, I wanted to make sure that I had enough. So I was like, I like, I like fifteen bucks, I think. Yeah. And Final Fantasy Nine, which is my favorite, is like twenty bucks. Wow. Yeah, it's the newest one that they have on there. Dragon Quest Five should be like fourteen ninety nine. Yeah. So I think every like every other Final week. Fantasy was that was fourteen ninety nine. Except for Nine, of course. Well, nine being the newest one, wants. it was like. So that was your big surprise? Yeah, that was my big surprise, Dragon Quest 1. And it's not that big of a surprise, but I didn't... That's exciting. I'm glad you enjoyed it. You've played Dragon Quest 8. I have. I just didn't didn't get very far into it. Yeah. You can get it on your phone now. Or on the 3DS. There you go. There I go. What else else you got? Uh, Yeah, so I looked at some Star Wars updates. Okay. For us all. uh, All our listeners who care about said things. Uh, Nothing huge yet. Obviously, we're all anticipating the first trailer to drop at some point um i was really hoping that it would drop with like beauty and the beast or something because i saw that this weekend it would kind of be weird to drop it with beauty weird. and the beast but there the um the wonder woman trailer was in front of it too so i was like really yeah i was like this is kind of like a weird one to put in front of a like a classic disney princess movie. well even wonder woman isn't disney right right no i was just thinking like the type of so because all the other previews were like the Nut Job, kid, too. Yeah. Like, kid, like kids' movies, Disney movies, um, and then all of a sudden this I wonder how Wonder that, Woman one. Do you know how advertising works in movie theaters? I have no idea. Because why would they advertise a Warner Brothers film in front of a Disney film? Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. Huh. I don't know how it works. It might be it might be with the theaters separately from the movie. No, that makes no sense. I have no idea. We, have, maybe we should look into that. Bid on the spots. Probably That'll be interesting thing to look up. So either way, that's... Uh, that's that. Um, so Star Wars updates. Two things. Yeah. Um, speculation based off some... Wait, is this episode eight updates? This is episode... All over updates. This is... Both of these things are small little bits about Final Fantasy. Some little Final nugget. Fantasy. Star Wars episode eight, potentially. So someone reached out to Frank Oz, who is the puppeteer and voice... Of Yoda. Of Yoda. I saw that. Um, and... His response was that, hey, I can't talk to you because I was asked not to talk to you about anything. Which makes the internet speculate that, hey, maybe he has some part in a flashback in this new one. So we could potentially see Yoda in some sort of flashback, or his voice at least. I would guess that if Disney or Lucasfilm asked him not to talk about it, it's probably because he has something to do with it. We know we heard... Yoda's voice in episode 7, but it was just a replay of mm-hmm. uh, what he said in previous movies. So, who knows? I mean, by the storyline, he is a Force ghost, so he should be able to communicate with Luke at any time or anybody, really. Really, really. Really, really, really. Yeah, I mean, we could see Qui-Gon Jinn back, right? Probably not. Uh, Probably not. So, he's the first one to do it, though. So, um, we should be able to... We, we might see him in the next one. And then the second thing, again, this is even smaller... Um, 
Captain Phasma will be in the next movie. And apparently she's... Gwendolyn Christie? Yes. The Gwendolyn Christie from Game of Thrones. Brienne of Toth. That's right. She's super hardcore in, in Game of Thrones. Yeah, she, she's she was way cooler in Game of Thrones than she was in Episode Seven. That's true. She was like a side character that had nothing. She got, she got like, thrown in a trash compactor. That's about it. Classic. She's like she, classic. She was Star treated Wars. like a wet rag and thrown in the trash. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where that came from. That just came out. Uh, but either way, apparently she's got a, new, a cool new weapon in the new one. A cool new weapon. Yeah, it's gonna be some sort of like Is it a gun that shoots lightsabers. No, it's it's a melee weapon. Apparently it's like a they're going all melee now. It's like a spear. Um, we're, the speculation that I read from Games Radar Trident? said that it was a force pike, most likely. Oh yeah, which makes sense because people in, were saying that Ray was gonna have a force pike, like a lightsaber pike from yeah. like the beginning. Mm-hmm. So they just like that weapon. Yeah. So there, she has some sort of new thing. Apparently, it, like I'm guessing. It's to counteract a lightsaber, right? Like, it should be able to block a lightsaber like those Tomfa things, like the riot sticks that they were yeah. using. Uh, the traitor. TR Radar. Traitor. Sure. Traitor, Stormtrooper. That mm-hmm. blew up the internet, that guy. Yep. So those are the, the minor two Star Wars updates. You better believe when that trailer drops, I'm going to freak out. Can't wait. <laughs> You're not excited. <laughs> I can wait. And I'm surprised we haven't gotten it yet, honestly. I know. I thought Super Bowl... Was gonna, it was going to drop. Maybe there's wait till May 4th. That'd be cool. I'd be okay with that. That's a good time to do it. It's a month. I, know. I don't want to wait, but it's for timing's months. sake, you should, like, May the 4th is the Star Wars holiday, so you should. Or Revenge of the 5th, depending on if it's <laughs> bad news. Ugh. It's really just a Star Wars weekend. You know? No! Yes. Get out of here. Yes! Do it. Let's talk about the Switch. Okay. So, as we talked about last episode, they had taken the Switch docks off the market mm-hmm. for a little bit. Um, now they have re-released them back to the market, except this time there's two options. Buy the original Switch dock or buy one that's just the case with no cables. So in case your original Switch dock breaks, you can buy a new one, keep the cables, uh-huh. and just plug them into your new one. That's $30 cheaper. Okay. So that's not a bad idea. That's actually pretty good of Nintendo, you would think. Right, to have options. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of time you would think... The dock itself is going to break more often than have like they, the cables. Have they fixed the whole scratching thing? Nah, the hard not. edges? I haven't seen anything about that. I haven't seen them about fixing it. Yeah. Maybe the new ones have something, but hmm. who knows? But also, the Switch has selling really well. Yeah, it's been pretty much sold out around a year. That's true. Um, and they are nearing the 2 million units sold. They're projected to sell 8 million units by the year end. Wow. So I did some research. Mm-hmm. And I got the three most recent slash popular consoles from their yearly sales. Sure. The Wii itself in the first year sold twenty million, twenty point one million units the first year. Yeah. So that's a eight lot. million units for the Switch is much less, mm-hmm. almost a third less. Sure. Uh, the Xbox One sold eleven million units in mm-hmm. its first year. Sure. Again, you would hope that the Switch would be able to outsell the Xbox One. But no. You'd hope so. Well, based on speculation. Mm-hmm. And then the PS4 is the top dog, and they sold 20.5 million units in the first year, and 2 two million units in the first month. So PS4, as we all know, mm-hmm. is incredible. Yeah. Sells really well. Sure. Um, 8 million units seems to be a really low expectation for a new console. Right. Like... That does seem very low, that, especially if they've when been you put sold it, out like crazy. Yeah, when you put it in context. As they've been, and comparing it to the PS4, which also sold 2 million in the first month. Yeah. You'd think they'd be able to sell 20 million. What? But the PS4 had so many other things come along with it. Again, right. the Switch, Zelda. And then you have five months of silence, and you have Mario. Right, and I think maybe that's why their their projected sales are so low. Because, like, why do you buy... Like, like, we've talked about privately, I think, before... Waiting till Christmas even to think about buying it. Yeah. Because there's, like, no real point. Right now we're playing an open-world RPG. Why do we want to buy a Switch right now when we already have it? We already have a same similar game. And then there's, like, nothing. There's nothing. There's literally nothing. There's like I mean, no, there's literally some things, but... There are some things that are going to be... That are out, right? Like, once you switch the... Uh, or the... Sk- snipper clips. Snipper, that's it. Snipper clips. But there's all these smaller games, yeah. which I don't think is enough to buy any console, right? The the indie games and the small games, those are supplementary to the major lineups, I would say. And I do think 
the Switch is going to be really cool for indie games. Yeah. If they design it for them. Uh, if, if developers hop on board for um, the Switch, which I know some of them have. Yes. Some of the bigger ones, but... Either way, uh, I would expect them to have a higher uh, pro- projected sale number than what they've Yeah, seen. 8 is at eight million. When I first thought, it was like, oh, that's pretty high. And then I looked at, I compared numbers, and like, that's super low. Like, the Xbox One beat that in the first year. Mm-hmm. And while the Xbox One doesn't necessarily sell bad comparatively to, like, the Xbox, Xbox 360, mm-hmm. they're pretty comparable. Um, you can definitely shoot for more than 8 million. Yeah, I wonder if it has to do with trying to keep it conservative like a so like like I know like the business side of things cost of production and everything maybe they are shooting to make 8 million or something like that's their break even point I don't know I there's probably maybe some business side behind this that makes them want to under guess what they're going to get I don't know. yeah underestimate we'll underestimate see. it it just it seems weird we'll see what happens I would guess they would sell more than 8 million I could be wrong. Because Xbox One's launch was like... Everybody like hopped off the Xbox bandwagon. When, after that E3 press. After the was. E3 thing, yeah. right? So like PS4 rolled into its release with a lot of momentum. Xbox One like fell across the starting block. It kind of like stumbled. You know? it, it totally stumbled off the front because they all the things... The visionary things they were trying to do with it. Like make it a home broadcast system. Yeah. Like try and make people pay for all the stuff and mm-hmm. people weren't on board for it and people were like yo i'm out see you later not hey, ps4 for um so well, even though we the best second best selling console of all time mm-hmm. had 20 million which is right on par with ps4 yeah the Wii obviously went on to do much more than that yeah sure but the ps4 last time i checked is at like 50 million mm-hmm. in three and a half years so obviously it slowed down but right i mean that's to be expected, I would say. Except for the Wii, which did not. <laughs> the Wii got better. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. That was a phenomenon. And then the Wii... I didn't even put the Wii U sales out. Because why... Because why would we? Yeah. The it's, Wii U so sold slow. less than the PS Vita. That's crazy. That blows my mind. Yeah. Because the PS Vita did terribly. That's right. Uh, I came across a glitch in Horizon. Talk to me. And I was going to talk to you about it, and then they patched it. Oh. But... Was that, that patch I downloaded the other day? Yes. They added a lot of stuff to the game in that patch, but this mm-hmm. one was, uh, it's the Hunter's Blind quest, mm-hmm. where you need to deliver a Snapmar heart to someone, and then after that you talk to somebody else, mm-hmm. and even though sometimes they would take the Snapmar heart, snap heart out of your inventory, mm-hmm. it wouldn't then proceed to the next quest line. It wouldn't, like, trigger the next part of the quest? Yeah. And then if you don't do that, you can't do things later on in the game, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Gotcha. So, but they fixed it real quick. But there's also a couple workarounds that I was going to talk to you about, but now they patched it, so it doesn't matter. One of the workarounds is getting two snap mod hearts. So mm-hmm. that way when they take one, you can give them another one and then it proceeds. Mm. Another one is instead of getting the quest to do the snap mod hearts, inherently you just kill a person and then talk to somebody else. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that works. But but they fixed it. Old news. Two other things about Horizon. Mm-hmm. One, I was thinking when I was playing, mm-hmm. and I really wish Horizon had a tech ability like you would see in Smash Brothers. Okay. Where right when you hit the ground, you can hit a button and you recover. Yeah, sure. Um, and if people say you can't do that in a game, I would point you in the direction of Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts has that too. You mean like hitting the triangle button? Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, in Kingdom Hearts, I believe it's circle. It's one of the abilities you can unlock. Because mm-hmm. um, remember, Kingdom Hearts, you can only have a certain amount of abilities. And mm-hmm. one of them is like dodge roll or recover or whatever yeah, yeah. it's called. Yeah, I remember those. So I think in Kingdom Hearts, you can either do it in the air or even on the ground. But it's like right when you get hit, as soon as you hit the ground, like the first couple frames, and mm-hmm. this is in Smash 2 recover from that because a lot of times in horizon i'll get knocked down yeah and then, and then you lay down and it takes forever to get back up and this right. and this and this by the time you get back up you're getting attacked again yeah so it'd be really awesome to have a tech like that yeah I'm not, I'm not gonna lie the last time i played horizon zero dawn yesterday uh which will be episode 11 mm-hmm. of uh our let's plays i had a really rough time i died like four times in that episode. Uh-oh. i was just doing some uh uh what are they called? The Trials? Uh, the Hunters? Oh, yeah. Hunter's Quests? Yeah, Hunter Quests. And man, I just got like wrecked. I felt so terrible. Dude, those are hard. Yeah, some of the, yeah I wanted to get Blazing Suns on all of them. So. Those are hard. That's going to be hard. Yeah. I'm working on it. They're fun, though. Yeah. It's it would have been nice to have a tech button for that. Oh, right? that's, so that's what I hope is going to be in Horizon 2. 
Because you know they're making a franchise out of this. Oh, yeah. They're, I want a tech button so when you get knocked to the ground, you can get back up. I also want an ability to when you use a potion or use your medical bag, it doesn't stop you from moving. Right. Because that definitely, not take you off? Yeah. Or like you're on the ground recovering and you hit the down button and you you don't use it because you're waiting to stand yeah. back up so you can like move your arm to your mouth for a second. Right? Like you pause. I'm like, Ooh. why can't I do that when I'm moving? It's I don't frustrating. Know. It is kind of frustrating. We'll come back to Horizon. We should just, like, take this segment out and, like, send it to them. Yeah. <laughs> take that, Gorilla. No, you guys are good. They're doing a great job. You're cool. They're doing a great job. I mean, if we're nitpicking about this stuff. Speaking about them doing well, Horizon has sold 2.6 million copies in the first two weeks. Wow, that's better than how and the Switch has been selling. That's correct. In comparison, <laughs> well, that makes Horizon the fastest selling new IP for PS4. Nice. Which again isn't. I mean, it's a good accomplishment, but a lot of stuff's been franchised since, so far. Yeah. So it's like, again, we've talked about all the time how Horizon's like this new idea we haven't seen before. It's a, mm-hmm. that's a new start. Mm-hmm. So they're doing really well. Yeah. Um, in comparison, the fastest selling, most selling game on PS4 is Uncharted Four, which is the last of the series, and that only sold only, and that sold two point <laughs> seven million. So Horizon's going to eclipse that soon. Yeah. No, um, this week probably. Probably already. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I guess Uncharted sold 2.7 in the first week. Oh, okay. So it took so Horizon twice as long to get there. Oh, yeah. Um, but with all the good news that's coming out of Horizon, like, there's no reason for people not to jump on board. Whereas Uncharted, you already know, but in the fourth iteration, if you want this or you don't want it. Right. For sure. So, very exciting news for Horizon. We'll get back to that eventually when I make some comparisons when we talk about Mass Effect. Sure. So, moving forward. What moving on, Telltale Games CEO... Leaves amid aggressive growth, he says. Essentially, he says, we're growing at such a fast rate that I don't think I can handle this responsibility as well as somebody else. So okay. I'm stepping down and promoting somebody else within mm-hmm. to do this job. So for those of you so who don't no know bullshit. what Telltale Games does, they make those, like a very specific genre of game, and they do it with lots of different stories. So that it's like a storytelling game, essentially. I would say, like, they focus on, they do, like, a Game of Thrones, they did a Walking Dead, they did... Uh, Minecraft, Story Edition, they did yeah. Tales of the Borderlands, they did Batman, they did, mm-hmm. uh, they're doing Guardians of the Galaxy. So they, they do all these games that they're all, like, similar genres, I would say, um, but they're, it's more, like, focused on storytelling, I would say, than, than the actual gameplay, from what I've seen. I've never played these games before. I got a sneeze tickling the back of my, Uh-oh. back of my nasal cavity. We apologize in advance for all, sneezing. I'll power happens. through. Uh, even though he left as CEO, he still stays on the board of directors. Um, I don't, at first I thought that was really bad, um, but I doubt the CEO really has that much control over game development. I mean, he has some, but he's not like the lead director, you know? Right. He's not directly involved in really anything. He's managing all of the VPs or whatever. All the different departments are reporting to him. So he's more vision than... So I was a little, uh, little worried there for the Guardians of the Galaxy Telltale series game. But then I thought, I'm like, eh, maybe it's not that important. And also, he's being honest, right? Like, this is getting too much for me to handle stepping down. I'd rather him do that than get into the position and do a really crappy job because yeah. he can't handle it, you know? And so, hopefully, they can get somebody in there who can do, do a great job. Good on him. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah! Matrix! Yeah, this is interesting news. Remember Matrix from 1999? Yeah. Or whatever that was? It's all a dream. This is all fake. We're all in a computer. Green letters falling from the sky. Direct quote. Digital, 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 digital. Hello, Mr. Anderson. That was your little recap of The Matrix. Yeah, I was, You're welcome. in my mind it made sense and I had like a visual, but... Uh... So The Matrix is coming back. Yeah, it is. I originally thought to be a reboot, it is not. Which is good. more of an expansion. I would rather it be a new story within the same universe than... A reboot? A reboot. The same one. Yeah. Get it? Because the, the, re- the same one. Rebooted. Matrix no. rebooted. Well, that too. But also, <laughs> the same one. Yeah. The one. Neo was the one. Keanu Reeves. Um, so Matrix is pretty all right. Episode one. The first, Matrix one the is first right. Matrix was awesome. Matrix two, the highway fight scene, pretty awesome. That was pretty sick. Matrix three, don't remember. Uh, There's also the Animatrix. There, so episode the third Matrix has a really awesome like war scene where uh, you're Zion about the very end. Yeah. Oh no, you're talking about in when they're fighting the machines. Yeah, the machines like invading Zion, 
and there's all these mech walkers. And the young kid gets the mech walker. Yeah, and yeah. Like, oh, and like that's sick. Like that is so cool. But at that point, the story is already like kind of getting a little act, like ridiculous, and no one really knows what's going on. Yeah. Uh, so one, I think one is my favorite, and then two is good, and three has some cool scenes, and I, I like I watch it because I like the series. But really, the first and second are where where it shines. Really, the first one's where it really shines. the first one. The first one was revolutionary. People, people had like, and there's this is the thing. So many movies use things that were developed in the Matrix, like the slow, the, the slow mo. Uh, Maybe not slow motion, but the dodging the bullets, yeah. like all that stuff. Man, the use of technology in that movie was awesome. So. You see it all the time. However, Zach Penn is to write. I don't think direct. Okay. To write, he's also known for writing X two. I liked X two. X Men: The Last Stand. So X two and X three. I didn't like X three. Uh, Electra. Didn't like Electra. However. He was also on Avengers 2012. I did like Avengers 2012. So he's got a mixed bag. So he does, Avengers wow. 2012 is the best hit or miss he's done. Yeah. Everything else is pretty, pretty not good. Yeah, I would say X2 is fine. If we were gonna X rank, the last stand is bad, and Electra is the worst. And Electra is like <laughs> even worse. So. So we don't really know what can come out this, of him. We could be anywhere on the spectrum is where this could <laughs> fall. Who knows? Michael B. Jordan is in discussions to be in the movie. Michael, Michael B. Jordan? Jordan, no. Well, technically. 23! Michael B. Jordan, Chicago you Bulls. would know from... I have no idea. You have no idea? I don't uh, know he was, was uh, Human Torch in Fantastic Four, Fan Four Stick. He was in Creed, I believe. He's in Black Panther? I believe he's in Black Panther. You'll know. You'll, if you saw I him, literally you know. don't know who you're talking about. I know, like, you mean the newest Human Torch? Yes. I think, it, like, Chris Evans is who I was thinking. Cause... And Fan Four Stick. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Okay. I know that guy. And the creators of Matrix, the Wachowski brothers, are yeah. not in currently involved that's, at all. That's a problem. That's a little say. depressing. That makes me a little bit uh, a little hesitant crazy. to want to see this movie. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see what happens. I mean, it's Matrix. They kind of... Do we want another one? Nah, not really. I don't. I don't necessarily need one. That's one of the franchises that you're like, it's done. Same thing with Lord of the Rings. After yeah, the Return, Return of the King, I'm like, you're done. And then they came back with The Hobbit. And I was like, you probably just should not have done that. Right, or just made it one movie and been That'd done be with cool. it. Instead of doing another trilogy. Yeah. Return of the King is one of the only movies that makes me cry. Man, the whole ending part of that. My friends, you bow to no one. Yeah, I like, know, oh, I was going to quote that. I was about to quote that. <laughs> you bow to no one. Like, and ah. the little hobbits. Man, I love that. Everyone it. bows and I know. Is I'm like staring up right now. And then like when Bilbo goes off to the onto the sea at the I end. I actually always fall, apart, fall asleep at that part. Okay. I get That's because there's like an hour after that. I'm there like, is. Ugh. Well in the books, after they that like uh I wanted to say Agumon for a second, and that's that's not a right. Digimon. I know. <laughs> Aragorn after he's like thrown and the hobbits go back to the Shire. Yeah. Uh Saruman is there. And, yeah, and he destroys the Shire. And he, like, is fighting the Shire and the Hobbits. Uh, so, in the books, like, they they developed now into these leaders, which yeah. they weren't when they left. And they, like, rally the Shire folk to kick out uh, Grey Worm and Saruman from the Shire. From the Shire. From the Shower. From the Shower, actually, yeah. <laughs> from the Shire. They just so, turned off the hot water and it was just ice cold. He's like, I'm out yeah. of here. So, that, that kind of shows, like, their development at, at when they left. And then when they come back, they're totally different people. Um, and so, they kick them out. And then... They leave. Bilbo and Gandalf, I think, sail to the to the seas. And... Come sail away. Come sail away. Yeah. So, there you have it. Man. They should be done. So. That's okay. It's the middle of March. It is. And March Madness is a thing. It is. Very popular. Very popular. Everywhere I go. Sports thing. Sports and ball. Real sports. We, we don't talk We don't talk about that much. Right? We really don't. However, <laughs> ESPN Esports has launched an esport player bracket, which I'm very interested in. Yes, yeah, you've been tweeting like crazy with it. It's well, okay, supporting our guys. It's like the March Madness bracket where you choose a team and, it, and you mm-hmm. go whoever wins at the top gets a million dollars or whatever happens. I don't know. Yeah, whatever happens when someone wins, we the, have no idea. This is you pit uh, esports player against another esports player. It's all based on a popular vote on ESPN's esports Twitter page, mm-hmm. and they're featuring games. Players from games like Melee, Smash 4, Call of Duty, uh, League of Legends, Dota 2, Counter-Strike, Global Source, Street Fighter 5, 
StarCraft II, StarCraft Brood War, and Halo. Nice. So a lot of different people from a lot of different games. Yeah, for they sure. They go head-to-head, bracket format. There's four different There's four different sectors, and then a, a, the victor from that will go to the final four or whatever. Yep. And then we'll, whoever's crowned will be the most popular esports player around. That'd be cool. So it's very exciting. Yep. People I care about specifically, I've been voting. or that we care about, mm-hmm. um, Armada from Smash. Mango from Smash. Mango from Smash. Hungerbox, Leffen. Yep. Uh, TSM Zero from Smash 4. Formal from Optic Gaming's Call of Duty team. Lethal from Optic Gaming's Halo team. And then a lot of other people from other games that I don't watch. But Armada was first seed in his in his group of four. Mm-hmm. So that's awesome. Yeah, for sure. And Mango went like 50-50 in the last round. Yeah. And he like barely won. Yeah. So Mango Nation gets to, needs to get on that. Yeah. He's got plenty of followers. He does. He needs to work on it. But super excited to see where this goes. Yeah. Uh, any predictions at this point? Did you make your own bracket? No, I did not. It's just fun to see esports getting. No, it's fun to see about? like esports. Well, getting talked about, but like combining as like a sport. I you could say like what if they did this with other sports? So what if they did like LeBron James and like Tom Brady and Tiger Woods? Yeah, and, like sure. Serena Williams. Like mm-hmm. what if they did things like that? All different games. Yeah. Yeah. And see who was the most popular. That would be that would actually be really interesting. It would be interesting. I'd like to see that. Giant popularity contest. Yeah. But I like esports. Yeah. So that's fun. So your favorite Marvel movie we've discussed at length. We have. Multiple times. Right. Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 was coming out in a couple weeks. Yeah. When I went to the movies this weekend, I saw they had like this couch cut out with all the people from Guardians of the Galaxy and all these kids were sitting on it. Did you know who they were? Uh, the characters, not the kids. Yeah. Cool. R- Rocket Raccoon and Gamora and uh, mm-hmm. Star Lord. Yep. Spot on. And Drax. There you got it. Nothing is too fast. I will catch it. James Gunn, the director for Guardians mm-hmm. of the Galaxy 1, Guardians sure. of the Galaxy 2, mm-hmm. has confirmed that there will be a Guardians of the Galaxy 3. But he's not going to be a part of it. But he's not going to, he might not be a part of it. I don't know if it's confirmed that he won't be. Yeah. Or if he just doesn't know yet. Sure. But. I thought maybe that would bring a little uh, well, sadness to your yeah, heart. You know, I, I wanted to bring that sadness out. Well, <laughs> it's welling up inside me. Just yeah. wait. I might cry here. Do soon. we need to watch Lord of the Rings? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited to see the next one. Yes. Gar- I am, I'm two. super excited Volume to... Two. Uh, who is it? Kurt Russell? <laughs> Kurt Russell is Ego the Living <laughs> Planet. So that's exciting. That'll be fun. Uh, I'm more excited for Thor Ragnarok. I would never thought I would ever hear that come out of your mouth. You were more excited for a Thor movie than for another Marvel movie? It's Because generally I thought you've hated the Thor movies. I didn't like one. I didn't like two. But have you seen stuff for Thor Ragnarok? It's awesome. I mean, I've seen Hulk's going to be there? Yeah. Who doesn't like Hulk? Dude, Hulk's awesome. I've also seen Guardians of the Galaxy. I think it's a little overrated. Okay. Especially the hype for the second one. I don't know if I've seen anything. Like, it's one of those things where it has a lot of funny jokes. Mm-hmm. I'm afraid they put too many of them in the trailer. You know? I, I always hate it when they do that. When comedy, stuff like that. They don't need to put them in the trailer because people already know it's funny. Mm-hmm. They just need to let us know when it's coming out. I mean, I think they're both going to be good. But I think yeah, Thor... Sure. What is it called? Thor Ragnarok. Is going to be is more significant to this overall storyline? Probably. Yeah, that's what I Probably. And I think it'll be it'll take the world by storm. You think so? Not the Halle Berry character, just the weather. I was anomaly. wondering... I was wondering. Oh, I almost made a comment about it, but then I was like, no, that's too... Well, I got you that's back. That's too off topic. I, I got you it. back. Uh, yeah, so I'm actually... I'm excited for both movies, I would say. I've actually... I like all the Thor movies. I don't know. I, I've been one in the past where people have been like, man, that Green Lantern movie is really bad. And I'm like, yeah, it's probably pretty bad, but I've seen it like ten times. Why? Just because I enjoy watching it. I don't know. I had a roommate in college. Not a roommate. I had a neighbor in college that had a Green Lantern poster mm-hmm. from the movies. Mm-hmm. It kind of makes me cringe just thinking about it. Yeah, it was pretty bad, but I just like superhero movies, you know? And they're entertaining regardless of how good they are. Would you consider Star Wars to be a superhero movie? No. You don't think Luke's a superhero? No. Do you think Luke's Luke's a hero? Uh, Yeah. Do you think he's pretty great? Yeah. Do you think he's awesome? Sure. Super, even? Uh, super, (laughs) to some extent. Hey, superhero! No, he's not a superhero. Well, I just like, to me, in my brain... A superhero needs to be part of kind of like our world to some extent. They don't, it doesn't need to be necessarily like the United States or whatever, but 
that needs to be directly in this universe, right? And Star Wars is just like totally different. It's in a galaxy, you know. Like most away. most superhero movies are like, I think of like Superman or like Iron Man or Captain America, and it's all like United States. It's like people, and then you've got the super person who's gonna super come along person. and save the day and do all these things. But in Star Wars, it's 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 not the U.S. It's nothing culturally the same. You're saying they can only be a superhero if they have to protect New York City. Yeah, one time or another. Essentially, that's what I'm saying. And Luke Skywalker's never done that. Luke Skywalker has never saved New York City. Okay. Well, when that happens, I'll consider him a superhero. Cool. I think that's the litmus test. New York City saving. Yep, saving New York City. So Spider Man's probably pretty good at that. Correct. He would be considered a superhero. A lot. Iron Man. I don't know if he negated his own uh, superhero ness with. Saving it and then threatening it again with uh, Ultron. Ultron, which we've talked about. No, no, Ultron. <laughs> it was uh, Sokovia that Ultron was after, not New York. Well, I mean, he was ultimately about the entire Earth, right? Yes. So, but he did save New York technically twice with the nuke from Avengers twenty twelve, and yeah, then sure. by stopping Ultron. Sure. But he also caused Ultron by your argument that we've proved after much debate. From Civil in War the past. when he said Ultron was my fault. Yeah, <laughs> that that really put the nail in the coffin for my argument. <laughs> Onward and upward. Yeah, let's keep going. And by upward, I mean way down. Solo Venom movie <laughs> has been confirmed to be released in 2018, mm-hmm. October 5th, which was originally the date for the Aquaman movie. Aquaman has now been delayed till December 21st of 2018, just right in the middle of Star Wars season. Which, you don't want to compete against Star Wars. No. I'm sorry, that's like... It'll be the Young Ben Solo idea. movie. Yeah. Which would be better, a better choice than one of the major Episode episodes. Episode 8 or 9. But it's still a Star Wars movie. Yeah, Rogue One did pretty good. Yeah. I think. Did very well, if I remember correctly. So, Solo Venom movie was announced, and it's slated to be released in a year and a half. Surprise, surprise, they don't have a director for it yet. <laughs> D... <laughs> Man, DC, man. So, DC, Not DC. Marvel. Marvel. Sony Pictures still has the rights to Venom. <laughs> Technically, they still have the rights to Spider-Man. So hopefully, Spider-Man's not going to be... I don't know what's going to happen here. Because Marvel and Sony had made a deal to obviously use Spider-Man in Civil War and the Infinity War Part 1 and Part 2. Um, and what other... Uh, and Spider-Man Homecoming itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um... I don't know what Sony's going to do with this Venom movie. Yeah, I don't know. Because you can't really have Venom either. without Spider-Man. Because Venom is the symbiote. Like, would they use Andrew Garfield? No. Can, they can't do that anymore, right? They probably not. wouldn't because he quit halfway through the movie. Andrew Garfield did? Yeah. Halfway through Spider-Man 2. Oh. He's like, I'm done with this. They did not agree. That ended badly. Dang it. That's old news. Hmm. That's why they didn't move on. Other than the fact that Spider-Man 2 was pretty bad. Yeah, the but ma- if you remember, Amazing Spider-Man 2 was bad? It wasn't very good. I liked it. If you remember from Spider-Man 3, Tobey mm-hmm. Maguire, mm-hmm. Venom was in that one. He was. Disguised as Tober Grace. Yep. Uh, Venom is the symbiote from space. Comes down. It brings out the worst in people. Yeah. Essentially, it makes them super strong, whatever. Um, it can survive, I guess, without Spider-Man, like, as a movie, but mm-hmm. I really don't know how. Because, like... Yeah, I don't either. We haven't really... Venom is mostly a a villain, but you could consider him, like, an anti-hero. Right. In the the most recent comics, he's, like, an anti-hero. Right. He can do things against his evil nature. But I honestly don't know how he can do that without Spider-Man being there. Yeah. Like, how do you explain anything? How does anything happen? Who's he gonna fight? I mean, they still have all, like, Spider-Man's villains and stuff. They can bring back Tobey Maguire. Oh, man. If only. (laughs) If only. I was pretty done after Spider-Man 3 with him. That movie was really bad. They were going to make a Spider-Man 4. Sam Raimi was going to make a Spider-Man 4. I was done. He was awesome. It was going to have Mysterio in it. It was going to be awesome. I was Everyone, done. Mysterio is my favorite. It was that movie. walking down dancing part when he's like getting real emo. I yeah. couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I was like, I'm done. Dunzo. Dunzo. Yep. So. Aquaman not looking good. No. Going against Star Wars. Right. Venom not looking good. And I literally and have nothing else. And I looked up the numbers for uh, Rogue One. Eight hundred million is how much they made. So uh, we're not talking. It's not beating that billion dollar mark, which I know Episode Seven and Avengers has beaten. 
But eight hundred million is a pretty big chunk of change. That's right. Right, and people who are spending money on that probably won't. They'll be less inclined to go see another movie. So let's see. I think the DC slate is Wonder Woman this year, mm-hmm. then wow. Justice League next year, and then Aquaman at the end of next year. I still think it's so weird that they're doing Justice League before they've introduced all the characters. Yeah. I mean, well, they introduced all the characters in that PDF file. And oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Whatever. that's enough. Yeah, just that five seconds. Sweet. So, I don't think it's going to work out. I don't think they're making good decisions over there. I was talking about last week, most of the uh, solo movie stuff and mm-hmm. some of the Justice League stuff will be told in flashback and flash forward details, which is just... Now, you're talking about, like, Flash's front side and Flash's back side? That's correct. His, flash forward and flash backwards? His butt... His butt is really backwards. And his pectoral regions. Mm-hmm. That's, that's it. That's what I thought that's... when you said flash. Nope. <laughs> Flashbacks. You gotta be specific, Tony. Flashbacks is when you zoom in on a character's eyes and then the eye and the camera goes all wavy. <laughs> and then you go back mm-hmm. and you see their origin. Because oh, of course you need an origin for everybody. Right. Although, you kind of need an origin for Aquaman. Because who knows anything about Aquaman? No one knows at this point. Uh, heroes, you don't need an origin for. Batman. Right, Superman. Superman. Mm-hmm. And even if you did, you just say, I'm from Krypton. Right. Spider-Man. Right. Uh, the Hulk. Right. Captain America? Maybe. Maybe. He wasn't super popular until... Yeah, that's true. Until the first Avenger came Iron out. Iron Man, they don't even talk about his origin anymore. Right. Uh, Black Panther, you need an origin for. But, and they did that. But Iron Man, before that movie came out, was not popular, so... He needed an, I think he yeah. needed an origin story. But if there's going to be four heroes that you don't need one for, Superman, Batman, Spider-Man. Sure. And whatever other one I said, I can't remember. Hulk. Hulk. Yep. Wolverine? Wolverine doesn't need one anymore. You don't We've really seen that enough. Yeah. But who knows anything about Wonder Woman? I, until recent years, thought Wonder Woman and Superman had the same powers. Because why wouldn't they? <laughs> but you thought she was essentially Superwoman? Yeah. Flash, what do you need to know? He runs fast. Well, he runs fast, and you can have an origin, but it's not necessarily that. Like, like probably got struck by lightning. Sweet, let's go. So, like, <laughs> his origin isn't necessarily connected to his character. You know, it's just kind of mm-hmm. a way to make him a character. Whereas, yeah. like, Batman's is one hundred percent connected to his character. Right, right? It's that's who why he, he is. does that. Right. Spider Man, that's why he does that. Sure. Um, Superman, his has nothing to do with. Yeah, his, his origin character. doesn't matter. Uh, Wonder Literally. Woman. From what I know about her story is that like she's supposed to defend the the woman place the Amazons. Yep. Um, and I guess she goes out to do that. Right. The well, I think in the in the trailer she said the world they're there to defend the world, but they haven't done anything forever because yeah. they've not been threatened at the level that the matriarchs think. <gasps> and so then World War One's going on, and uh, Captain Kirk shows up and is like, "Yo, this is going on." Captain Kirk. Yeah. The, the actor from who's Captain Kirk and the new Star Trek movie. Chris Pine? Chris Pine. Okay. Yeah. I forgot his name off the top of my head. Well, you're welcome. Chris Pine. I'll be Who looks you. like a World War One guy. He's like he's got that like classic handsomeness going on. Classic handsomeness. You know, like that baby face but with the woof, woof, woofy hair. It's all the Chris's. Scr- Chris Square Pine? Jaws, Chris, Chris Evans? Evans Chris right. Hemsworth? Chris, yeah, dude. They, all of those guys. It's all the Chris's. Yeah. So anyways, Christopher Walken? You know, I will say the trailer made me like... Want to go see Amazon Woman, Wonder Woman go and add it? Because I love World War One. What are you saying? <laughs> I, I'm trying to say that before the I saw the trailer for This Wonder is a Woman, family podcast. I know. Uh, <laughs> oops. Uh, that's not what I meant. Uh, before the Wonder Woman trailer came out, I was like 0% chance of going to see it just because DC's had such a bad track record. But, and Wonder Woman's not going to get them back on track. No, Wonder, probably not. But uh, the World War One backstory... Uh, like story dropping behind, mm. uh, makes me like interested. You can just see Dunkirk instead, dude. I'm gonna see Dunkirk. I'm so excited for Dunkirk. Holy cow, Christopher Nolan! Oh man, I'm so ready. I'm ready for Dunkirk. Justin's ready, everybody. Dunkirk, man. When that first trailer dropped, like so long ago, like last year, I think. Stick uh, a fork in him. He's Dunkirk. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought of you as Bone. You're the doctor guy. He's like. He's done, Kirk. He's done. <laughs> He's done, Jim. 